Hey there, trombone players. I bet you're excited, and today we're going to figure out how to put these trombones together so that it's safe and done correctly. So, let's get started. Um, so, when you're putting your trombone together, you want to start with even thinking about what side is the top and what side is the bottom. Um, now, this is my son's trombone, so what I've taught him and all the other kids to do is make sure that you have it so that you can tell which is the top and which is the bottom. If his name can be, well, we put a little bit of tape there. If he can read his name correctly, then that's the correct way. It's not upside down. If it was upside down, his name would look upside down, and he would say, oh, not a good idea. Now, the reason you do not want to have um, your trombone upside down, the reason it matters is because the whole thing sometimes can spill out. So you want to have it laying down like this. Also, do not put it up like that and then unlatch the trombone because the whole thing kind of tends to just fall out. Every trombone case, it seems, is different. I have not found a lot of trombone cases that are exactly the same. Some cases are newer, some cases are older. And so depending on that, the models and, and the styles of the case really change in uh, vary quite a bit. Okay, so it's on its side. I can see his name. So now I'm going to unlatch it. Now, if you're doing this, probably the latches will go up. A lot of the cases, like I said, are different, but if the latches go up, usually that means you've got it the right way. So last latch over here. Okay, so when you open this up, I want you to check a couple of things for me. You basically have three parts. You've got your slide, you've got the main body with the bell, and then you've got your mouthpiece. It's not too many parts. Opening it up. Now the top has the slide. This is the slide. Okay. This case might be similar to your case. So some of you might have like a little flap where you have to clip in a piece of fabric that holds the slide. Um, some of them have a little Velcro piece. This one has um, a little notch down in the case where if I push the instrument down into it, it goes bonk, and that's how it's secure. It can't get out. Um, so, if I can tip this up, see how this is not falling out because this is one of those cases. Right here, it, there's a notch right here, and that is how that stays in. There's one right here on the, on the main body too. So when I pull this out, I might notice that it's got a little bit of a, um, did you hear that? You can kind of hear how it kind of settles in. You can tell it's in place. Okay, so what I want you guys to always do until you get really good at this, is always check your slide to make sure it's locked. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're going to take out your slide. Let me stand up to get mine. All right, here's my slide. And when I mean locked, I mean right here, there's a little gizmo. It locks the slide so it can't come in and out. This is the number one reason trombone players have trouble with the trombone is because the slide gets bent. The tubes on the inside are very wobbly, they're very thin, so if this detaches all the way and you bonk this, it very well could be that your slide's not going to go inside in and out of that tube perfectly like it needs to to play it. You have to send it out for a repair right away. So make sure right now that this is locked. Okay, some of them don't have this little little knob here. Some of them just look like um, kind of like a screw and you can just figure out which way it tightens it. Usually righty tighty, lefty loosey every once in a while it's the opposite. So you really do have to kind of figure out which way your trombone works, okay? It can be a couple different ways. So at any point pause this video and we'll go back and rewatch it, anything you need to do, okay? So now that I know that this is locked, I'm actually going to put it back just for a second, but I'm not going to push it down to notch it in. I'm just going to lay it on top so it's easy to grab. Now I'm going to grab the main body of the trombone. This is so easy to dent, so please be careful with the bell of any brass instrument, but for trombone it's, you know, it's, it's pretty and it's easily bonked. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold this in my left hand. So this is my left. I'm going to do it the way I would normally do it. Um, and then I'm going to do it backwards uh, so it looks like my left. But this is my left, so you should be doing it with your left. If I'm doing it backwards, this is my right, but it looks like your left, if that helps you, I'll do that in a second. 
So this is my left. Notice where I'm holding it. There's this little knot here. This is the top. Not these two brackets, but down here there's another one. I'm holding it just underneath it, closer to where the bell is. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my right hand, because I'm right-handed, and this is in my left hand, and I'm going to gently take my slide and bring it over here. So now I have one in each hand, and that's really how you have to do it, guys. Um, if you put it all on the floor and try to put it in that way, it's actually a little bit more complicated. If you need to start to do that first, like lay all your pieces out and then see how it fits together, do that. That's fine. But once you get a little quicker, you're going to want to have this in your left hand, this is in your right hand. And do you see how this is short and this is long? The long part is what goes into the trombone. And it can only go in one place, so that's pretty easy to see. So once you have that in there, then you want to gently put this on the ground and twist that up. It screws so it attaches. So I'm going to do that so it's not out of sight. So I'm going to hold it between my legs, but that's not how I would normally do it. So do you notice how this is like, waving at me it's going left to right but this is going directly straight away from me okay they're not parallel where they're both doing the same thing that would be weird you have to turn it so this is actually facing away from you straight away so this guy's right in front left to right this guy's straight away okay now if I can show you a little bit more what that looks like you see how this is going this direction and this is going this direction. Okay, once you have that, then you want to tighten it up. And I have this between my legs so I can screw this up in. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Thank goodness that's the way this one works. Now you want to tighten it as good as you can because if you don't, then this is going to start to get loose on you and you're going to feel like you're the whole thing's kind of coming apart. Okay, after that, I'm still holding it with my left hand, I will get out my mouthpiece. You put it in there and you give it a little twist. That's all you have to do. It's heavy enough on its own. You don't want to ever jam it in there. You do not want to pop. You want to just give it a little twist. Okay, so now if I'm holding it, it looks like this. This is not actually the proper way where your hands go, but just to show you the, the way it's assembled. This actually lays on your left shoulder. And then this, as you can see, goes straight out. So I'm going to go straight out like this. Okay? Now let's talk about where we place our hands. One second. Let me turn the lights back on. Okay, so if you make this shape with your left hand, L for left, right? And then turn it this way like you're pointing at someone. Okay, remember this bar that I told you connects onto the slide? That's where you're, hmm, this. Right, the very bottom of your thumb, right before it turns, right in this bend, it goes underneath that bar, watch. Okay, your thumb is just going to, let me show you from this perspective, wraps around, your thumb just wraps around. Your first finger is going to touch the mouthpiece right here, right here. Okay, now I have a lot of kiddos who have a lot of growing to do and they can't quite wrap, see, I can just almost even wrap my first finger there. Some kids, they can just barely touch just like that. That's okay. Okay, just give it a touch. If you can put your finger extend a little bit further, that's great too. Then these three fingers have to wrap around this bar. This is the first part of your actual slide. Okay, so your thumb's wrapping around this part of the trombone is connected here on the top part. Your three fingers are wrapping around the top, in between the top and the bottom of the slide brackets, okay? This is how you hold the trombone with your left hand. Then, 
Here's another good example. You can see the bar here. Thumb wraps around, finger touches. I can wrap mine because it's I've got larger hands. I've all, I'm all grown up. And then these three fingers wrap right here in between the two brackets. Okay. Now here's the slide, but remember this slide is locked, which is a good thing because I did a lot of moving to go turn those lights back on and if it had not been locked, this whole thing would have fallen off and it would have gotten damaged. So I have this on my left shoulder. My right hand is going to hold the second bracket to play it. This is so important. This is the number one reason slides get damaged. It's because I'm going to unslide, unlock it. If you go straight in and out, everything is good to go. Two fingers and a thumb. That's what you get to hold on with. If you put your whole fist on this, what you're doing is you're actually not sliding straight in and out, you're actually pushing pushing on it, going that way a little bit, okay? That's gonna bend that inner tube. So, out, in, two fingers and a thumb. So from here, it looks like my, my whole fist is on that, but it is not. Let me show you from this angle. This is why I do it, right here. Now, you're gonna see a lot of variations. If you YouTube any professional players, you're gonna see a lot of variations, but I'll tell you, once you get to be a professional, you can do whatever you want. But in the beginning, we all have to do the same so that I can give instructions and I know everybody understands what I'm saying. Okay, straight in and out. And guess what? It is super important when you're done playing, do not just put your trombone down because you want to come back to it later. You have got to lock the slide. Okay. See, I'm hanging on to that with my pinky. That's why when it was unlocked, that's how I held it to lock it. If your hands are not big enough to do that, that's okay. Just put it on the floor so it's, you know, kind of the bottom of it is resting on the floor. Lock it and then you're good to go. Speaking of on the floor, what you have down here, most of you have one of these, that protects the slide from getting bonked. So you can imagine if this little stopper wasn't there and people put their slide on the ground for whatever reason, it's going to get a dent in it. Um, which will affect how the air goes in and out of that tube. So that's important that you don't ever bonk this down. Be careful. The other thing that you might see or notice, let me go this way. This is called a spit valve, also known as a water key. If I push it, and there's lots of different styles of these depending on how old your trombone is. Some of them look very different. After playing for a while and you're buzzing your lips into that, that buzzing is going to collect, that moisture is going to collect from the mouthpiece down here. It's going to collect. So you are going to go to the trash can, children, not on the floor, okay? Do not get in trouble with this. And you're going to push that open. And most, if you've got a lot in there, gravity will just pull it out. If not, you want to just give it a little push with some air. Don't put your mouth in the mouthpiece and buzz through it. You're putting more spit through it then, okay? Now, if your arms are not long enough to do that on your own, that's okay. I'll show you in lessons how we can kind of um, improvise a little bit. Um, there's a couple little things. But for the most part, that's how you assemble your instrument with your mouthpiece, both parts, making really sure that you've got this locked all the time and how to hold your hand, two fingers and a thumb, okay? And then this hand wraps, touches, wraps, wrap, touch, wrap, okay? Leans on your left shoulder. <laughs> And that's the trombone. I'm going to lock this back up. Now, to take it apart, you untwist. You're going to take this and just give it a little squiggle there. And there it is. It just comes right apart. So, this I always put away first because it's that bell we want to take care of. And I just, just lay it there and then put it where it really goes once you're done, mouthpiece, give it a little pop, double check that 
is closed. When you put it away, the spit valve needs to be on top, not underneath. Otherwise, it'll get bonked in the case, smushed. So that's one way you can always tell if it's up or down. Just whatever, wherever that spit valve is or water key is, make sure it's resting on the top. You'll hear a pop on this one. Good funk to it. Let's listen to it again. Got a good little sound. That's how I know it is put away properly. Okay. Close it all up. And closed. And there you have it. Now you know how to put your trombone together. Now practice and get good at it so that you can do it carefully and then you start to feel like you know what you're doing and you can handle things nicely. Okay? See you in lessons!